Hey Garage Fabbers! I'm currently rebuilding the rear air suspension setups on two different trucks. My wife's 1987 Mitsubishi Mighty Max and my buddy Keith's 1971 Chevy C10. Both trucks will need custom bag mounts fabricated and welded to the frame. In order to do that, I need something to hold the upper bag bracket at the bag's fully deflated height while I weld them to the frame. One might think an airbag itself would be the best tool for the job. There's a couple reasons why it's not. One, even with no air pressure in them, air springs don't collapse to their minimum height, especially when they're new. They like to chill at about half of their maximum height, and they require a lot of weight to smash them down. Remove the weight and the rigid rubber walls will just return the bag to its natural resting height. That's annoying. The second reason is air springs are pretty dang expensive. Showering them with welding sparks and potentially melting them with the metal you're welding would be a kick in the sack. So instead, let's use something cheaper and less melty. In the past, I've always just used a block of wood cut to the collapsed height of the bag. It works, but it's boring. YouTube doesn't like boring, so let's get a little more fancy. Now, before I waste your time, you can purchase these already made. Just search for mock-up airbags. But if you're like me and you can't wait for shipping because you need them right now, or you just enjoy building stuff because it makes you feel good about yourself and buying pre-made stuff is just cheating and you ain't no cheater, stick around. Grab some cardstock and a marker. We're making templates again. First step, determine your bag's minimum height that's fully smushed. You can step on it and have someone else measure, or just look at the product details for the spring you're using. Write it down. Second step, determine how big around your air spring is. You can measure it like this, or just look at the product details for the spring you're using, and write it down. And lastly, measure the diameter of the bag's mounting plates. Write it down. Divide that diameter by two, and set a compass to that measurement or do as I did and just trace the mounting plate on your cardstock. The upper and lower plates on most bags are the same diameter, so you only need to trace one circle. Now, take the total bag diameter and the bag's smushed height and draw a rectangle. This next part is not required and serves no other purpose other than to make your mock-up airbag look like an airbag. Split that rectangle in half long ways and draw a line. This will be the center of the bag between the two bellows. I don't know where the footage of this part went, but put a coin or a bottle cap in each corner and trace around it to round off the corners. After cutting out your templates, you'll have something like this. We're going to mark the bag mounting holes on the templates, but we first need to find the center of the template. If you used a compass, you've likely already got a dimple that marks the center. Good for you, fancy pants. If you traced it out like I did, here's how you can find the center of a circle using a compass. Measure the total width of the circle and divide the number by two and set a compass to that measurement. Put the pivoting point of a compass on the edge of the circle and scribe a line through the estimated center of the circle. Move the compass to another point on the circle and make a second scribe. The point that the two scribes intersect is the center of the circle. If you want to be extra precise, move to a third position and scribe a third line. Mark the center. I often just use the center bolt when mounting the bottom of the bag, so this mark will serve as the bolt hole location for the bottom plate. For the other two holes on the bottom, or the two holes on top, because they're often different, measure the distance between the side of one hole to the same side of the other hole. This measurement is the same as measuring the hole's centers, but it's more accurate. Set a compass to half of that measurement. Put the pivot point on the center of the circle and scribe a smaller circle. Then, with a ruler, draw a line through the center point that extends beyond the circle you just created. The points that the line crosses the circle are the locations of the centers of the bolt holes. Because I use the center bolt on the bottom of the air springs, I'm going to need to make some notches for clearance of the center bolt. If that's not clear, it will be when we weld everything together. If you'll be using a cutoff wheel to cut out your steel plate, you can just trace these templates directly onto the metal and cut them out. I will be using my plasma cutter, so I'm going to turn these cardstock templates into wooden templates 
that I can trace with the plasma torch. If you've been watching Garage Fab for a while, you know exactly what I'm doing here. But if you're just joining, I like to shrink my tracing templates by removing 3 16ths of an inch from all the edges of my templates because the plasma cutter can't cut flush to the edge of the template. That means my end product would be bigger than the template. It'll all make sense when you see the plasma cutter in action. I will be making six pointed mock-up bags. So each bag will get three of these plates. See this edge? I'm pretty sure we've all had some project in grade school where we cut a slit in two pieces of construction paper so that they fit together. That's what we're doing today. In order to make two of these pieces fit together, a slit needs to be cut halfway through each piece on opposite sides. I'm using 3 16 inch thick plate, so the slits need to be at least 3 16 of an inch wide. That would be perfect if you would like to make a four pointed bag. I'm going for six points, so I'm just going to widen the slits a little to make a sloppy fit that will make room for another piece. The easiest way I've determined to add the third plate is to just cut it in half completely. We'll be ready to weld everything together after we drill a few holes. You can do the holes two ways. You can drill and tap them like I'm doing, or if you don't have a tap set, you can just drill the holes large enough to fit the bag holes and weld nuts on the back side. If you do that, you'll need to make these notches we made earlier a little bigger so that the center nut fits. It's time to melt all our pieces together, starting with the bottom plate. I want all my vertical plates to be evenly spaced, but since I'm the great avoider of math, I centered a large hex nut over the center hole and marked the six corners. Then I drew lines through these marks to get a six-pointed star. If you've got multiple holes on your plate, make sure you're not drawing any of these lines over the holes, or the bolts will run into the vertical plates. You can now line up your vertical plates. It's not crazy precise, but it doesn't really need to be. Put on a few tack welds and it's time for the other plate. If you've only got the center hole in the bottom like I do, you can just slap the top plate on all willy nilly. If you've got multiple holes on the bottom, stop for a second. The top and bottom holes for an airbag are in line. So the holes of your mock-up bag need to be the same. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to install the bolts without twisting the bag and twisting a bag is probably a really bad idea. Here's how I would do it. I would draw a line through the center of the holes all the way to the edges of both circle plates. Extend those lines over the edges. Now, while assembling, line those marks up using a square. Use the square to also make sure the plates are directly above one another. Take your time and then weld them together. There's no need to weld every last seam. These mock-up bags don't need to be that strong. Just a few heavy tacks around the edges would probably be plenty. Of course, I went ahead and added a few more beads here and there, just because. These mock-up airbags are ready for mocking up some bag brackets. First on the Mighty Max, then on the C10. If you want to see it, hit the subscribe button. And until then, my friends, keep moving forward.